like I'm too far into the future. Fareed, <laughs> you're going to need to join me if we're going to communicate. I'm sorry. I I can't do it. I Darth, actually can't. Darth Brian. Have you tried it yet? The Vision Pro? No. You're the only person I know who has one. Oh, you want to buy mine? No. <laughs> <laughs> but next time I'm over your house, I will try it. It might be gone. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to offload it before. Yeah, then. I think you can get like two X for it, right? No, really. So I, I don't know. I've no. You're you're able to like go buy them in the store right now. Oh, you can. Okay. So you can't get Riverside up on the Vision Pro. You can't make that work. I don't. Ha- I haven't tried. Okay. Yet. I, I honestly, the it's like you can't you can't wear the thing for more than five minutes. Really? So why not? It's too it's too heavy and it's too uncomfortable. Oh, interesting. It's a super cool piece of technology. Don't get me wrong, but it's just not there. The use case basically has to be less than fifteen minutes. What are you gonna do? You can't watch a show, you can't watch a movie. None of the entertainment use cases work. So none of the productivity use cases will work. I'm sure like the weight and fit and stuff w- will come down over time with tech improvements. But the whole thing is like start with a high end product for a niche audience like the Tesla Roadster, right? But car enthusiasts were able to drive the fucking Roadster. I don't know right. what to do with this thing, <laughs> like, right? Like I don't, you know. So super cool piece of tech, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not keeping it around. Yeah, I'm. I'm extra grumpy this week, but like I said, amazing, amazing piece of technology they put together and some like cool UI stuff and the eye tracking is like all that kind of stuff. Super cool. Yeah. So I think we should move on to other things. I've been playing around with a lot of more AI products. You want to talk about that? Always fun to talk about. Yeah. So okay. That's let's fair. talk about, <laughs> let's talk about AI. I've been playing with all these products. Let me just go through a few here. All righty. So I've been playing with a bunch of products and I'm kind of seeing some things emerge. Okay. So this is v0.dev from Vercel. Basically, it generates UI components okay. for you and then lets you iterate really quickly. So let me actually just, I think I should find a finished one to show you this. What was one that I was looking at the other day? Ah, oh, this pricing one. Okay. So... Left On the left-hand side here are all the iterations, and you can see what the prompts are. So this was basically just generated by, with a starting prompt of something like make a like sexy pricing page. Yep. And then he was like, oh, what get started CTAs. And then it was like, make the check marks the same on the same line as the feature and so on and so forth until he basically got to this pretty nice end version, huh. right? And you can do this for like UI components. Another one that and this generates with... real Vercel hostable code, I assume. Oh, something? yeah, yeah. You could just yeah. copy and paste the code. Yeah, you just can copy and paste the code. Cool. And you could fork it and do all, all kinds mm-hmm. of other stuff. Another one that I've been in the visual Have you ever space... seen this version where you get to see the whole prompt history as uh, part I'll, I'll of the to... generation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll get back to that. I think that's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, let, let me show you a few and then I'll, and then I'll yeah. get back to that. So this is another visual one. So... Let's say two guys recording a podcast with one wearing futuristic goggles. Let's see what it does. <laughs> As it's generating, what it does is it generates four options within a canvas, and then it puts some essentially. <laughs> not, not it puts bad. some. It puts some lightweight workflow on the right hand side. Okay, another one is napkin AI. This is make your words visual. So it's like helping people visualize. Oh, I need things. <laughs> so I said the same thing. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, this like, like this seems be... made for Brian Balfour. It's like, yeah, turn yeah. the loop I'm talking yeah. about into a diagram, right? I love the concept. I think they still have some some work to do. The, okay. the visuals it generates is, is still pretty limited, but that's not the pattern that I'll come back to and, and show you. So- you know, here I was like playing around with things around activation, but you can just like, you basically type in a generation, it generates something, and then it puts you into this like lightweight workflow. Go okay. Ahead. So it, what I'm noticing is it's really interesting. Like there's all these tools popping up that all the historicals, the notions, the Adobe's, all those folks, they basically have already drawn the box 
of their workflow, right? And they've basically created for this world where the tool kind of lets the user do all of the creation and all of their AI features are basically helping their users generate within this like existing box right. that they've already drawn. Whereas all of these tools kind of like flip it inside out and instead they start with the generation of the creation and then they layer on a super lightweight workflow around the creation depending on what the creation is and so it's like a totally different starting point now the reason i think that's interesting it kind of goes back to our conversation with nabil and midjourney about how they really focused on you know the thing that mattered the most at the beginning, which was building the best model to generate like beautiful images. Right. Right. And you can export and, and all those things into like the other tools once they're, once they're finished. Right. So like on a differentiated axis. Okay. Strut is one of these AI note-taking tools, like for writers. Okay. And they actually have some really, really cool features. The feature I like the best is this you can at mention docs in your prompts. So as a result, if you're sitting in one doc, let's say like writing a blog post yeah. on something, you can say draft this section using at some other oh, cool. doc where you've kept notes in your prompt, right? So you can string this together. They also did a really good job with what they call these brand tones uh -huh. so that it'll write in different styles. They just make it super, super easy. Like you can just plug in a URL of a website and it'll automatically generate the brand tone for you. Or you could just copy and paste a blog post or two or some sample of your writing and it'll automatically generate the brand tone. So super interesting. The problem with this tool versus the other tools is that I have to replace my entire workflow that I already have established with Notion or Google Docs right. or whatever it is to use these like couple cool features, right? And I have a feeling that that's going to be a failing strategy. These features will probably just get copied by the historical players over time. And so I think it's just like an interesting pattern that I've been noticing where there are these tools that start with the generation first and are layering on like light workflow that are is more designed for like rapid iteration and then like hopefully makes it easy to like export into whatever like finishing tool mm -hmm. that you need to or, or that you want to versus these other tools where it's like, I got to replace how my old company does presentations, the presentation tool or the whole note tool or whatever it is in order to use this, which that feels like very dangerous territory. So yeah. The tough part here is that there's sort of this balance. Some of these tools that are just like, help me do the thing I was doing before, but a little bit faster just doesn't feel like enough. It doesn't feel native. It doesn't feel AI native, so to speak. But then on the other end, if you want to push towards like really unlock new ways of working, new ways of doing things, you run into the problem that you're talking about, which is like the cold start problem of I have to choose a whole totally new tool just to get this new set of features, right? So I think yeah. there's a tension there. I think the one example you showed that I find really interesting is in our conversation with Nabil, he talked a lot about how the use of Discord in mid journey is about the tribal knowledge of prompting and like building community around how do I get this to look this way? How do I use these words correctly? That kind of stuff. And what I loved about that first one, the one from Vercel that you showed was that it wasn't just the result and a prompt. Yeah. It is the history of the back and forth iteration and conversation it has with the AI in order to get the desired result. There's something cool about seeing someone else's work, like not just the finished product, the finished artifact that I think is really valuable and interesting there. So that's like maybe worth using a new tool because I don't just get the outputs, but I get other people's work. But asking someone to switch everything they do probably requires you to be really narrow on your use case and user. Like you can't go super horizontal. So like, cause it has to be 10x better for somebody and it's hard to be 10x better for the Notion or Google Docs for a horizontal product. Although Notion yeah. did it, so I don't know, but. Well, I think the thing I took away from Nabil's conversation was 
the thing that they focused on was like the quality of the generations, right? And mid journey is leaps and bounds better than yep. most other models still, right? And so I, I think there's multiple losing strategies here. I think there's the losing strategy of I've got to replace my entire workflow to get these couple like incremental features. Mm -hmm. The other losing strategy is the one where you start with the generation layer on the workflow, but the generation is like only slightly better than I could get by using the generation features in my existing workflow like tools tool. or chat GPT or something like that. Vercel is a little bit different in the sense that they're focused on a type of content, UI components, you know, that I just haven't seen a ton of competition around, yep. though I haven't explored exhaustively. What was the other and I would add like the UI create prototype creator. I can't remember what it was, but anyway. Well, there was like TLDR or TL draw. TL draw. TL draw or t yeah. The other interesting thing I'll point out about v0.dev is it's really designed to basically generate components of a UI. So pieces of a UI, which I think is like actually really important. Whereas there's a lot of folks, a lot of tools that are like trying to essentially help you generate like an entire product or page or right. landing page, the size and the complexity of the thing is so big. But by focusing this on UI components, the atomic size of what it's generating is smaller and therefore increases the probability that it allows people to get to something they want to through a series of iterations on this stuff. And it fits into a workflow where you can just copy that right yeah. into your existing code and be done with it, which mm. is pretty cool. Yeah, it's interesting that they launched it sometime like late last year. And it seems like it has some traction, but not astronomical traction, which is pretty interesting to watch. So hmm. that's my AI exploration of the week. Anything that's blown your mind? I mean, no, but I think that's par for the course, right? I mean, most things that are getting successful traction have scoped down what they are trying to do with the AI in order to hit a repeatable user bar. And so my guess is from here that scope increases incrementally, right? And as a result, it'll be interesting to see whether we have the feeling of something mind-blowing or if our expectations just kind of adjust and move incrementally with improvements over time. But if I jump in with two quick follow-up? Yeah. Okay, first on strut. If we're thinking like a couple moves ahead, if they didn't build their own platform that everyone had to come into, they're not also creating any stickiness at the time? I disagree. I think some of these ones where they focus on the generation first and really like nail a far better generation are mm. going to be sticky enough to buy themselves enough time to start to layer on workflow around the generation to make it even stickier, right? So I imagine mid-journey will end up building workflow around their model and their generations over time to help those like power users to keep people to like stick in it. But they focused on a very different axes of differentiation. I think there's some other components like the Vercel stuff where there's some social components. I can see other folks. Yeah. I can build on top of it like really easily. So you could actually argue by focusing on the generation first and the social components first that you're building some type of network effect there that will create stickiness in those types of components versus focusing your limited resources on basically rebuilding a bunch of features that Notion and all of these other things already have. So that, that would be like a second bet at this. And so if you had the same features that Strut had, the idea would be to build a plugin that works on top of Notion and Google Docs and all those other tools instead. Oh, I don't know what Strut stat strategy is. I think it's going to be very, very hard for them. I think as like Fareed mentioned, like maybe they can find a slice of users of other note takers that feel underrepresented. I've seen like some AI tools specifically focus on book writers, for example. And the workflow is very specific right. to writing and editing like books and something like that. Whereas a notion and Evernote and stuff like that is not built for that. No one likes the incumbent tools for that stuff. There's some like random tool that screenwriters yeah. have to use that they hate, you know, like that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. This is the same thing as we talked about before with like even up and fluent, for example, right? They are focusing on like a 10x generation of instead of a wide range of artifacts like uh, images and stuff like that to the demand letter 
for the business case, right? And my guess is like they use that as the wedge into the other problems of the users and like other like adjacent stuff. Yeah. So all this stuff is a different version of this though. I love the social angle that like Ideogram, Visual Electric, V0.dev, all these folks have created because I think that, that could end up being, you know, an advantage over time. Yeah. If there's like process power and learning how to do this stuff, like how to prompt well, how to communicate well, it's sort of, you can imagine people building up social status by being really good at interacting with these tools. And that, that could be a stickiness factor, right? Like I'm using social status in the context of like the status as a service idea or whatever. Yeah. 